if my hair is a little messy today, it's because it's really, really windy outside. I stopped by my friend's house and got <coughs> some sculpty from her. And she suggested that I roll the clay so I can get the uh, eyeballs the same and uh, roll it into a kind of like a tube, like that, and then cut it right down the middle. And then when I roll the clay, it should be equal parts. That looks pretty good right there. Yeah, that works good. I think what I'm going to do is go home and fire this. And, uh, what should I do? Go home and fire those tonight. I'll put these back in the uh, bag. I just wanted to get the, uh, size right because uh, which I just did and I'm gonna let that sit in the plastic bag until I go home to later on. All right, I got a friend coming over tomorrow an artist friend by the name of Jim Dolan he's a uh, pretty big here in the state of Montana as far as artwork goes um, anyway he's gonna come over about one o'clock tomorrow so I'm gonna be here and meet him he, where he wants to discuss a project with me. I have uh, pictures of uh, mountain men on my cell phone here and I'm just going to go through and take a look at a few of them and decide what I'm going to put on Jim Bridger or the mountain man that I do. Not sure it's going to be Jim Bridger yet Ah, uh, see. Pretty square jawed. Well, I'll see what we can do. Uh, this is going to be a young Jim Bridger. It's not going to be an old Jim Bridger. And so I've got to, uh, assume a lot of things as far as what his face would have looked like when he was younger. I don't know the shape of his nose. I'm just uh, going to go by a really bad picture of him that obviously was uh, doctored a lot. It's the famous picture of uh, Jim Bridger and I can see that he's got kind of a thick front on his nose. He's got a wide mouth, thin lips. I don't know if his lips would be been that thin when he was younger, but I'm just going to go with what it feels like. One of the things about sculpting famous characters uh, who had no real good pictures of them, it leaves you open as far as your imagination goes. and What you do is you just interpret what you see and uh, try to create what you don't see. Does that make sense? <laughs> Looks like he had a fairly strong chin. Well, anyway, that gets the ball rolling as far as his head goes. I think what I'll do is just uh, work on his neck a little bit and uh, Give him a windpipe <laughs> so he can breathe. If I end up putting a beard on him, that uh, all will be disappeared. This leaves it open so that uh, if I decide not to put a beard on him, at least I got the neck started. Thing is, my great great grandfather may have met this guy in his travel across the uh, prairie because I think they went through Fort Bridger on their way into the Salt Lake uh, Valley. He was a Mormon pioneer and he traveled west in 1846 and 7. And uh, 
was one of the first uh, settlers in the Salt Lake Valley. And so it very well could be that uh, he either met or saw Jim Bridger, because uh, Jim Bridger ran the uh, trading post there just uh, about the border of uh, Utah and Wyoming. Now, as you know, I'm working with a uh, true form armature, a 24 inch uh, version. It really does help to uh, help you get your proportions just right. give them some side burns, I think.
just trying to feel out what I want to do. This is a collar to a cotton shirt. They probably would have preferred cotton shirts over leather shirts because uh, the ability for cotton to dry out real quick. Also, uh, in winter time, they may have worn wool shirts as well. All a guess. I mean, there are no reliable photographs of uh, mountain men back in the early 1800s, and just a few stylized paintings of them. I'm uh, putting a coat on them. up in the mountains or even on the plains. Kind of liking it. I, I'm trying to decide what kind of a cap to put on. I mean, the only hat that I see on Jim Bridger is a hat with a brim, but uh, I'd like to put a fox fur cap on him and uh, just have to see how I feel about it tomorrow. All right, I'm going to head out of here. Got to get my clay softened up and uh, get it closer to the light. There we go. You start getting down the stack away from the light and as you're working and the clay gets stiffer and stiffer, so it's got to soften up overnight.